Well, folks, the Chinese EV industry is splitting ways. Whether it be NIO's $4,200 price cut across all its models, Xpeng's $25,000 pre-order number for the G6, or Li Auto's first profitable quarter, each automaker in this industry is performing drastically different from the rest. Whether this can be contributed to the recession China's coming out of or the overly saturated EV capacity in the country, chances are you've seen just how polarizingly different companies have been performing from NIO to Xpeng Motors to Li Auto and even BYD and Tesla. Where Tesla and Li Auto are reporting record quarterly deliveries, NIO and Xpeng are seeing slumps in year over year numbers, resulting in price cuts across both companies. But the question that everybody wants to know is whether or not this is a sustainable strategy in the long term for this market. Because as we've seen in the US, capacity is not the name of the game when it comes to making a profit and selling cars. It's mostly about brand name, marketing, and in some cases, technological innovation, like we've seen from Tesla Motors. Why exactly are some automakers performing better than others? And what does it mean for the future of those that are making losses in the short term? Well, those questions are exactly what I'm going to address in this video. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, for those of you that might be unfamiliar, Li Auto is the third publicly traded Chinese EV automaker in the US. This company went public alongside Xpeng Motors in fall of 2020, and over the past one year, its stock has outperformed that of NIO and Xpeng by rising over 3 to 10%. And the reason for that outperformance is actually pretty simple. Whereas NIO and Xpeng are increasing losses on a quarter to quarter basis, burning cash, and reducing their profit margins, Li Auto is actually approaching break even profitability on a gap basis. For the month of May, Li Auto delivered around 28,000 cars, up by 146% versus last year. This compares with NIO, which delivered 6,100, and Xpeng Motors, which delivered 7,500 for the same month. Not to note that Xpeng's actually declined on a year-over-year -year basis. Based on these numbers, it's pretty clear that Li has been benefiting from a strong uptake of its vehicles in the fastest growing auto market on planet Earth. And to understand as to exactly why this might be happening, look no further into how the Li Auto SUVs actually work. Because unlike Xpeng, Tesla, or NIO, Li Auto's vehicles are actually plug-in hybrids. They call it the Sport Electric Drivetrain, which essentially has a gasoline-powered range extender alongside a small 22 kilowatt hour battery. Li Auto only had one model when it launched in 2020, but now here in 2023, they actually have four with the L9, the L8, and the L7, which all basically happen to be built on the same platform. This clearly allows Li Auto to reduce cost of its manufacturing plant and increase profit margins per gross vehicle. As a result of these economies of scale and cost savings, in the first quarter of this year, Li Auto actually turned a net profit of around 136 million US dollars. That is compared to a similar loss this time one year ago. The company has now around $9.5 billion in cash compared to $1.7 billion in debt, which means they have a quite healthy balance sheet to continue to expand their operations. But I'm sure the question on everybody's mind right now after hearing those last two sentences is how on earth can Li Auto be put in the same category as NIO, Xpeng, or Tesla if they don't even sell fully battery electric vehicles? And well, the answer to that question, folks, lies right in how China defines their new energy vehicles. You see, back in 2009, the Chinese government adopted a plan to leapfrog current automotive technology and seize the growing new energy vehicle market. And that includes both battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles. The government's political support for the adoption of electric vehicles has basically four goals, which is to create a world-leading industry that would produce jobs and exports, create energy security from its very oil-dependent Middle East structure, 
and to reduce urban air population. However, even though the battery electric vehicle market in China in the early 2010s was growing quite rapidly, there was concern from consumers after a survey conducted in 2012 about the range of battery-only vehicles alongside the grid instability. The study highlighted that there was an increased preference from Chinese consumers to buy mid-range plug-in hybrid electric vehicles like the Toyota Prius over a fully battery electric vehicle, implying a potential for earlier plug-in hybrid adoption in China compared to the rest of the world. And this right here, folks, is what led to the adoption and creation of the China NEV mandate in the mid-2010s, which is responsible for the country now leading the electric mobility charge on planet Earth. Because what this NEV program allowed is for manufacturers and buyers of NEV vehicles in China to get subsidies from the government. Not only did OEMs have to produce a certain amount of vehicles per year to qualify for these mandates, but they also had to produce them all in-house. There's also a strict vetting policy of some of the components inside the EVs to understand where they're sourced from, which can help in deciding how much credits and subsidies those kinds of companies could get. This policy is undoubtedly the number one reason why China's sales of electric vehicles has surpassed that of Europe and the US. And it's safe to say that those two continents can learn quite a bit on how to scale EV adoption from China. However, an obvious byproduct of this is that plug-in hybrid vehicles like those manufactured by Li can also be counted as new energy vehicles, which means they can be put in the same competitive category as Xpeng, NIO, and Tesla. And because obviously a hybrid provides a more practical and longer range experience than a battery-only vehicle, Li Auto is reaping the rewards of higher sales, faster growth, and better profit margin per vehicle sold because they are naturally less dependent on the extremely volatile lithium-ion supply chain. As you can see, someone like Lucid or Rivian have fared much worse than these Chinese automakers because in the US we simply have poor policy when it comes to EV adoption. Companies in the US raise their money first, invest in their infrastructure first, and then start selling cars last. Whereas in China, it's actually the exact opposite. In China, you don't really raise money from the public markets. Most of the money raised for companies like NIO and Xpeng came from their wealthy founders, or in some cases, even state-owned enterprises. And once these companies get ready for more adoption across borders, that's when they decide to go public and raise awareness in other markets like in the US. And this unfortunately results in gullible retail investors in North America to purchase different stocks with different expectations, which has unfortunately been one of the biggest reasons why Li has been outperforming its Chinese EV counterparts. Because as we just learned, Li is in a different category in and of itself. They are not selling battery electric vehicles, they are indeed selling plug-in hybrids. Whether or not Li should be counted as an electric vehicle startup here in the US depends on your own interpretation. As usual folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.